Hi guys, welcome back. So this is Doctor Who Season 1, Episode 5, The Keys of Marinus, Part 5. And this episode is called Sentence of Death. So let's get straight on into it. Oh, that's right, it left off where someone hit him on the head. Oh, he's still got his teleporter, though. Do you want to tell me where you've hidden it? Who are you? My name is Terror. I'm an interrogator in the Guardian. I was going to say that uniform is you quite... You well enough to talk? Oh, my head's pretty sore. Mm. What happened here? I'm waiting for you to tell me. Me? SS possibly no, is a little bit too strong of a kind of comparison, but uh, that's just kind of what it reminded me of. I saw the body on the floor. I bent down to have a look and someone hit me on the head from behind. Yes. Your work? I'm a teacher of science. Hmm. You know the purpose of the micro key? A reply. It would make my report complete if you would tell me how you got rid of the micro key. I didn't get rid of it. Someone I never stole had it. it. I saw it in that glass case before someone hit me on the back of the head. While you were unconscious, my men searched the room. They searched you and the body of the guard. They didn't find it. Now, what did you do with it? I didn't do anything. You tell him. I told you all I know. <laughs> you are not privy to hear the rest of this conversation. Well, there was another man in here. I got a lump on the back of my head to prove it. The dead man could have hit you before he was killed. And I suppose I killed him when I was unconscious. Well, it does suggest you had an accomplice. I agree. So you had better produce him. That's my advice to you for what it's worth. I don't have to produce him, Taron. You do. This is circumstantial evidence. You must prove that I did the actual killing. That is contrary to our legal system. What? Thank you. But I'm to tell you there must be no disturbances of any kind. The laws are very rigid. Offenders can be sent for one year to the glass factories in the desert, instantly and without trial. I understand. Chief Enquirer Taron has arranged for you to speak to your friend, but you do understand that you mustn't give him any packets or articles not previously examined by me, yes? Good. Any news? No, not a sign of him anywhere. Several people saw him only two days ago. Was that before or after he was arrested? Well, after, as far as we can work it out. In a moment, I've got to go in there and face an accusation of murder. I need a man to defend me. I am that man. That is some serious headwear. It looks like toilet paper streamers. <laughs> Like they really couldn't be asked on Halloween or something. <laughs> Our decision not you may now reply. My lords, I cannot defend a man when I have not considered every aspect of the case. I must have time to examine witnesses, read statements, and to prepare my case. Good role on the other. The demand is reasonable in itself. The crime of murder in Millennius is in itself unusual. <laughs> then I grant you two days. Thank you, my men did a heat reflector search of this room. It is absolutely certain that the micro key isn't in here. It is equally certain that it's not been taken from here. Oh, come now, Taron, we're not dealing in magic, you know. It's obvious to me the key must have been taken from this room. No, every person that came in here was checked by the ores array scanner as they went out. If anyone had the key on them, the scanner would have detected it. Supposing the murderer hid the key on the body? The body was searched. It wasn't there. Uh, then would you mind telling us what happened after the alarm bell went, uh, please? Hmm? What? <laughs> have you any idea how the key got out of here? Oh, elementary, elementary. <laughs> Father, do you mean you know? I mean, how, where? All in good time, my child. The important thing is, I believe I know who did the killing. But how? Taron's been working on it all day. You've only been here a few mm, minutes. You see, Taron never doubted that Chesterton was guilty. A grave error, yes. <laughs> oh, a very grave error. <laughs> yes, whereas we know he's innocent. Uh, precisely, but someone did it. And we also know there was a third man in the room. How he got in here, we shall know in a moment. Now, let us assume he was hiding. Yes. 
Yes, behind this door. He opens the case, lifts the key, the alarm bell sounds. Now, he only has a few seconds. So he conceals the key, runs to the door, opens it, gets out and then closes it. But he can't do any further because already the security guards and officials are on their way. So <laughs> he decides to pretend that he is first on the scene. The relief guard! Yes. yes, of course. That's why the guard inside let him in in the first place. He knew him, he even expected yes, him. he went in. She looked like I do when oh, the people who's trying to sell you Avon come to the door. Like, know. fuck it now. Do sit down. I did want to talk to your husband. I thought there might be some facts he'd overlooked. I'm sure he'd want to help, but he's already told you everything he knows. Well, there might be some small thing, something he thought unimportant. The Guardians are very sorry, you know. Anyway, he'd want the murderer to be caught. Ephraim was a good friend of his. He... What are you doing here? I want to talk to you. I have nothing to say to you. <laughs> Get out. <gasps> I don't want people prying into my affairs. Has she been asking questions about me? Not as many as my grandfather will ask when he calls you as witness. Get out. You heard me. Get out. I thought you might like to know that we know where the key is hidden. But you couldn't know where it is. I... Just tripped yourself up, you tit. Yes. Yes, you know where it's hidden because Chesterton told you where he hid it. I don't know what you meant, but you shouldn't have lost your temper like that. It was very foolish of you. Don't you talk to me like that. Ah! What a twat. That's a heavy walker. Bison here. Don't say any more. There are people near. I'll take it on the personal. <laughs> I'll take it on the law. But add to it the fact that under psychometric examination, this mace was found to have been held in the right hand of the prisoner. I need say no more. That concludes the evidence for the prosecution. We will now hear a statement from the representative of the accused and convicted. He's being convicted already. My lords, and do you know where it is now? Yes, I do. Then please tell the tribunal where its present location is. It is here. Where did you get it? It was given to me by the man who killed the guard. Is he here? Yes. Then please point him out to us. There, sitting in the front row. But she can't have found it. I... Oh! All right. Barbara was right I'll in tell there. You everything. Say you have three of the micro keys in your possession. Yes, my lord. And we, we return to find the last one. Then they would all be returned to Arbitan. Fact remains. But Arbitan's dead. He is missing. Still in the place where it was hidden by the murderer Chester. Oh, come now, surely you don't think that he's still guilty. I admit that I resorted to a subterfuge when Sabitha uh, accused Aiden of taking the key. But I think the results justifies the means. Oh, there are a... Only he lived, he might have told us everything. Well, it was his wife I felt sorry for. Well, the doctors have given her obliterated drugs and sent her home to rest. She was hysterical. <laughs> Better resume your places. The tribunal is about to start again. I really want to know who took it. Where's Susan? Oh, she's gone to get Ian's statement. It is clear that Aidan was involved in either the theft or the killing. It is also clear that he had an accomplice. His last dying words were, they made me do it. They were the accused and his accomplices. They were standing near him when he was killed. One of them is responsible for his death. I submit that the defense has offered no new evidence and the sentence of the tribunal should be carried out. The tribunal concurs. Though it has deprived us of more detailed evidence, the unfortunate death of Guardian Eden has surely not affected the issue.
What is it? A messenger brought this for you. Well, thank you. I have to get back inside. Will you excuse me? What is it? Poem. It says, there will be another death if you disclose where the key is hidden. What? Barbara, you realize what this means? It proves that someone else was involved. Barbara, they made me call you. Who, Susan? Who? Barbara, listen, they were... Susan? Susan? Are you there? Susan? They're going to kill me. Susan? I kind of feel like I have to say, rule number one, Never let Susan go anywhere alone. Ever. Second thing I want to say is that I really, really feel like the person who took the key, we're going to know them. It's not going to be someone really random. We're actually going to know who they are. I don't think it's the man from the previous episode in the hut. Um, I don't think it was him. Is Arbitan actually alive? Is it him? And has he been dodgy all along? Because I think I said at the end of episode one, was he kind of giving them a spiel about what the keys in the machine of Mar for Marinus did? And does it actually have an ulterior motive? Um... Are the Vaud actually trying to stop the machine being used? Or are they kind of wanting to either destroy it or use it for their own purpose? Um, I suppose we're only going to really find out in episode 6, which is titled The Keys of Marinus. Um, so we'll get straight on into that one. See you soon.